Hi, I'm meteorologist Brandon Ivey with StormChasingTour.com, and today we're going to take a look back on a historic tornado outbreak that occurred on April the 27th of 2011. Now, we were still chasing with Discovery Channel Storm Chasers at this time, and we filmed in southeast Mississippi. We chose this location because we figured this would offer the least amount of heavily forested areas. A lot of Alabama and Mississippi is heavily forested, and that's another reason why we didn't go further east into Alabama. Now what we did is we set up on a highway, Highway 45, we picked a longitude and just moved south in latitude throughout the day as storms developed to our southwest. Now on this map behind me you can see that there were numerous tornadoes that were reported from the deep south all the way up along the east coast and into the northeast. This was a very challenging chase day because not only did we have issues with terrain, we had tall canopies of trees and forests that were blocking and obscuring a lot of our view to the storms we were chasing, but storms were also moving to the northeast at about 45 to 55 miles per hour. And when you have a lot of these winding roads through forested areas that we encountered in Mississippi, and you have storms that are moving that fast, you really can't chase the storms. You just have to set up out ahead of them and basically intercept them. So that's what we did. We just moved south throughout the day and picked storms off as they kept moving northeast. Tornado tracks that are encircled in green are tornadoes that we saw and the tornado tracks that are encircled in yellow are tornadoes that we missed. Um, this was either due to the storm recycling at the time that we encountered it or it was also due to the fact that we got to the storm too late. Uh, the storm north of Ritter in Mississippi we got to a little too late to see that tornado. Uh, the tornado that the storm that actually produced the Birmingham and Tuscaloosa tornado uh, we just missed seeing its first tornado that it generated that day and you'll see that in the video here after a while. Once again, we took Highway 45 and moved south, picking off storms as they developed to the southwest and moved northeast. Uh, storms were moving really fast this day. Uh, the terrain was very tricky, a lot of trees, um, a lot of roadways just cut out of forest. Uh, there were a lot of winding roads. So there was no way to keep up with these storms when they were moving 45, 55 miles per hour. Uh, so kind of the logistical uh, way of attack for this day uh, it was just to pick a highway um, and drop south and pick off storm after storm as they moved up. Now, if we look into radar reflectivity, this was the tornadic storm, the main one you're going to see in the video, that produced an EF4 tornado um, that went through Enterprise, Mississippi, and we encountered this tornado south of Meridian, Mississippi. Now, if we look over at the velocity mode, you can see that it has an intense mesocyclone on it, and this was at the time it was producing a tornado. You can see the intense mesocyclone associated with the storm, indicating that a tornado is on the ground currently with this storm. We're at the intersection of Highway 45 and Highway 14 east of Macon, Mississippi. The storm is in the process of recycling. Now we have a tornado visible at times through the trees located northeast of Macon. wrapped in rain. This is the second supercell we intercepted. We're near Scuba, Mississippi. It hasn't produced a tornado yet, but it does right after it moved over this tree line. This is the storm that went on to produce the Tuscaloosa, Birmingham tornado. I didn't show the third supercell we intercepted east of Meridian, Mississippi, but this is our fourth and final supercell of the day. We are at the intersection of Highway 45 and Highway 514 south of Meridian. This storm has an EF4 tornado on the ground just leaving Enterprise, Mississippi. Yeah, it's on the ground. That's a large tornado. Moving right this way too. Keep it on the ground, Brandon. May pass a little bit to our south. Oh, it's gonna stay on the ground. It's on the ground. Stuck in all this stuff on the right. Right there, stick. Yeah. There's the left edge of the tornado right there. The right edge is over here. It's yeah, moving right this much. way. It's gonna pass probably right here just to our south. Yeah. 
You hear it? Yeah, Yes, sir. Southwest moving east northeast. Yes, it's coming right this way. In my video, you can see all the small tree debris falling from the sky due to the strong tornado. John is shooting the tornado from his turret in TIV-2 as the tornado is rapidly passing to our southeast. Now the tornado is off to our east, quickly becoming obscured by trees. As it tracks away, it produces a horizontal vortex showing its violent strength. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more videos like this in the future and moving into some educational videos as well as we get into the winter months. Uh, the subscribe button's right down there below. Just subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get the latest uh, emails uh, when I post a new video. And if you're interested in chasing storms, I highly recommend you booking a tour with stormchasingtour.com. I'll take you out for a week. Uh, you'll learn a lot about severe storm forecasting, uh, how to chase safely. You'll see some amazing storms as well. And it's a good overall experience if you're wanting to get into storm chasing and you really don't know the ropes of how to go out and do it safely or really how to put a forecast together. So once again, all the information for the storm tours are over at stormchasingtour.com. Again, that's stormchasingtour.com. And thanks for watching.